Tom. Coming up on First and Four, a Southern Kentucky congregation works to recover after a fire and wind damage. Plus, volunteers work to save hundreds of flood damage photos and documents from a school in Heinemann. And the mountains are yet again under a threat for strong to severe thunderstorms. Tracking the very latest coming up as Mountain News First and Four continues right now. Mountain News First at Four continues. Strong to severe storms are possible across eastern Kentucky tonight and early tomorrow. Meteorologist Evan Hatter has the latest on this first alert weather day. Evan. Well, that's right, Steve. We continue to watch the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms already across parts of western and northwestern and south central Kentucky. And that whole threat is shifting to the east as we head into tonight. Your first alert weather day continues. Here's the current radar loop here in the mountains. No issues at the moment. We're not really under the cap anymore, but we don't have the uh, the we have the ingredients. We just don't have the trigger to get storms to form in the mountains just yet. And all of that is still out to the west where severe thunderstorm warnings are in a line from west of Louisville to the Tennessee border, and that continues to push to the east. Tornado watches up that way. Severe thunderstorm watches come as close as west of Monticello, Somerset, Mount Vernon. They're not here yet, but I do think a severe thunderstorm watch will likely be issued for the region as we head a little bit later on this evening. Overall, it's a level two slight risk. This is not an off the charts, big time severe weather threat, but it is severe weather season and you should be aware of what we're dealing with. High winds, 60 mile per hour winds or better will be the uh, best threat out there today. Some localized high water can't be ruled out. Large hail threats pretty low. And again, the tornado threat low, but never zero. That's why we want you to be prepared. That's why you should have that first alert weather app handy. Look at this. It is a warm and breezy day. Plenty of sunshine out there. 84 the current temperature here in Hazard and we will continue to see rather gusty conditions throughout the day. Middle and upper 80s right now at this time. Look at that. 87 in Irvin, 87 in Manchester, 88 Harlan and Jonesville. It is a summer day out there, especially thanks to those winds gusting at times 30 to 40 miles per hour, bringing in the warm and moist air. In just a few minutes, I'll have the very latest on when those storms move in and it looks to be during the overnight hours as we continue to see those temperatures hover in the 60s. Steve, I'll have the latest from Pinpoint Doppler in a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you. A Southern Kentucky congregation is working to recover from a major fire. The main sanctuary of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Somerset was spared by most of the fire damage, but was impacted by another event last weekend. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what happened and how the events are strengthening the congregation. It has been almost two weeks since fire swept through the classroom and office building section of the Cornerstone Baptist Church. However, the sanctuary was spared most of the damage, but just a couple of days ago, something else happened that caused damage to that part of the building. To be honest, I, I was kind of worried it was gonna happen. A firewall saved the sanctuary when fire destroyed the three-story office and educational section of the building. But then high winds Saturday knocked part of the firewall through the roof of the sanctuary. The damage looked a lot worse from the outside than what happened on the inside. It didn't come, um, it was kind of a roof over top of the roof on that, so that absorbed a lot of the, the uh, when the wall fell, <clears throat> but it uh, definitely done some damage on the roof. And the good news is the pastor says that they have a new place to worship temporarily, the Freedom Worship Center on East Mount Vernon Street. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Phil, thank you. The Somerset Fire Chief says the cause of that fire has still not been determined. A group of experts and volunteers from across the country came to the Heinemann Settlement School today to try and help save hundreds of photos, documents, and more. Melissa Helton is the Literary Arts Director there. She says it's important to preserve history. We were able to get some of the, the mud and debris off of it. Um, they had paint brushes that they were very gently or they were blotting. But some things were so delicate or um, so damaged that it was just like, let's just dry it with the dirt on it. Helton says she's continuing to work to save more historical items. Students in Pike County are working together to give back to the community. North Point Academy's Jobs for America's Graduates program is working with the University of Pikeville's School of Social Work, opening the Helping Hands Kids initiative for free store days. Families were able to drop by the former Mullen School Gymnasium to take free food, clothing, and more. 
leaving students to reflect on the importance of giving back to those in need. Someone, your best friend could be in need and you wouldn't even know. So to go out there and help these people, it's an amazing feeling. Just get out there in your community, help, and be that, be that handout that people need. Well, the Free Store event served families Saturday and today, giving the community a couple of different opportunities to be involved. We now know the name of the person accused of firing a gun on Berea College's campus. Police arrested Allie Isaacs Sunday. They say she fired shots near Kettering Hall early that morning. Students were advised to shelter in place while police investigated. Officers say they later found Isaacs behind a residence hall with a handgun and shell casings nearby. Her charges include wanton endangerment. Protesters flooded the state capitol in Tennessee to protest gun violence after the tragic school shooting at Covenant School in Nashville last week. Now state lawmakers are seeking to remove three Democrats from office accusing them of disrupting proceedings by joining the protesters. Representative Justin Jones is one of those Democratic lawmakers. I mean, I think it is um, morally insane that a week after a mass shooting impacted Nashville, I represent a part of Nashville, um, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, their, their first action is to expel their colleagues for joining the thousands of Tennesseans who are demanding common sense gun laws. Students, teachers, and community members rallied outside Tennessee State Capitol building on Monday, one week after the deadly shooting at the city's Covenant School. In Texas, a large sinkhole has opened up just northeast of Houston. It also happened 15 years ago, and now landowners are worried about how large it could grow. Lauren Tallarico has more from Liberty County, Texas. So, Dezetta sits on top of a salt dome. Back in 2008, a cavern collapsed under the ground, causing a monstrous sinkhole. We are talking some 900 feet in diameter, and now it's swallowing up more land once again. The Liberty County Fire Marshal told me off camera that it's grown more than 150 feet in diameter over the past few days, worrying locals not only because of the sinking, but also because some of the containers left over from what was the Deloche oil and gas waste well still have chemicals in them. The fire marshal says they're not sure what those chemicals are, but they are working to empty them. Meanwhile, for nearby residents, it's a waiting game. A lot of concern. concern. And it's been standing still for 15 years, and then now this one. They're keeping an eye on it, but I mean, I don't think anybody knows what going to happen. I'm told a geologist is on site along with the TECQ, the Office of Emergency Management and other officials. But when it comes to Mother Nature, there is nothing they can do to stop this. A salt dome collapsing caused that Texas sinkhole. Here in Kentucky, limestone voids commonly cause sinkholes in the bluegrass region. Coming up on First at Four, gas prices are expected to increase again as OPEC signals it will cut output. Plus, strongest severe thunderstorms moving through the Commonwealth now. That's a tornado warning west of Louisville. We'll track them into the mountains coming up after this. WIMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen, customized to the categories you choose. 